I have a lot of friends that want to ask lots of questions, and I seem to be uh, busy with videos about answers and questions, Q and A's. You know, so I got another one for you today from a friend named Rodney. He's one of our subscribers. Hello, Rodney. I, I replied to your I, I, actually. I got to tell you, folks. I got to tell you a little quick story. Rodney sent me a message on on Facebook Messenger, and he's asked me a bunch of questions, and I don't like using Facebook Messenger. He's, I, I don't like to have to use my phone. I don't like typing on my phone, and yes, I know, I could put Messenger on my computer, but I just don't like it. So anyway, I, wanted, I asked Rodney to copy and paste this text into a new email and send it to me, and I would reply, I would answer it for him. And so what did he do? He took a screenshot of his messenger message to me and put it in an email and sent the email to me. But anyway, so I went ahead and took care of it for him. And when I come back, I'm going to answer his questions. He had some good questions. Hey. Hello there. So here we go. Rodney asked me one, two, three, four, six questions. I'm going to answer them. Some of these we've talked a little bit about in the past, but some of these we haven't. I got one here that's particularly interesting that we're going to cover. But anyways, first question, uh, actually, I'll start at the beginning. Hello, Don, again. I hope this finds you well. There are so many different people to watch and listen to, and a lot of them seem to have a way about them that doesn't tell the whole truth. Are you talking about YouTube people? Really? I know exactly what you're talking about. I absolutely know what you're talking about. I still want to come and find out for myself. Good idea. I just sent my FBI report papers off yesterday. I'm excited. I have a few questions for you. I know you will pick and choose if you want to use any. So here we go. Uh, this first question, swab debit card. What do you think a good limit would be on the card. Well, I don't know what a good limit would be. I, I I do know this. You don't have that much control over it. It's really, I'm sure there's some limit that Swab has. I bank at Swab. Um, and I have the Swab Visa debit card. I think that it, it's up to the ATM. I go to the same ATM all the time to get cash that I need throughout the month. I usually do it a couple times a month. I do it at the same ATM in the mall. And uh, I can't really go into detail about exactly where I go to get it, what particular ATM, but because you know, you never know who's watching these videos. And, uh, you know, I just, I got to be careful. I'm, I'm learning my lesson as I go through this process of being a YouTuber and I had to be careful about giving out too much personal information. But anyway, the ATM has, I think I withdrew $600 once and normally I don't draw $600. Usually I, I get like $200 or three or $400. Sometimes I've been, I've done a couple times where I've, I've gone and got 500 bucks and I didn't have any problems. I got to tell you, folks, if you go to the mall to use the ATMs and you get a large amount of cash, three, four hundred dollars, actually get any kind of cash, especially if you see a lot of people, especially younger guys standing around, just, you know, put your money in your pocket and go take a taxi home just to be on the safe side. Unless you got to go grocery shopping or something, you know, you need Go, go do that. But, you know, as soon as you get your cash, don't do like a friend of mine, an old friend of mine does, and stand out there and count it. Because uh, now you're just showing everybody what you got, and that's just not a smart move. I always say, if you get cash out of the ATM machine in the mall, really anywhere, take a taxi and go home with it and put it away, because you don't want to carry all that around with you. We still do have petty crime here, so you got to be careful about that. I know this, Rodney, when I came to Ecuador, when I first got here, 
I needed to come up with, uh, I think it was 1400 bucks. I only had a thousand on me. I came with a thousand dollars, which is going to kind of answer one of your other questions, but I came with a thousand dollars, but I wanted, I needed that money. That was my pocket money. I needed that money. I needed to come up with this cash to pay my deposit, my first month's rent. I had hell getting that money together because I couldn't find an ATM all up and down the Malacon here um, and different locations that would give me enough money and then I'd hit my limit for the day. It took me three days to get all the cash together for my deposit, my first month's rent. I can't answer what is a good limit, but your limit is going to be determined by the ATM that you're using, whether it's Banco Wyakil, Austro, Banco Austro, Banco Pachincha, Banco Pacifico, any of those banks. You just never know. You won't know until you get here and start trying. So question number two, how much cash do you think one person should bring with and should it be in $100 bills? Absolutely not. Do not bring $100 bills. If you go into even Mega Maxi, big grocery store chain here, and give them a $100 bill, they're going to want to see your passport, and they're going to document that that $100 bill came from you. And if it's bad, which I doubt that it would be, but you know what I'm saying, just in case, they're going to, they're going to treat you, they're going to put you through the ringer. And then the other thing is like, you depend on, you go to a restaurant with a hundred dollar bill, sometimes you may have a hard time getting changed for it. Whether these people do that on purpose or not remains to be answered. I know there's more than one way to gringo you here. And one way to gringo you, gringo you is to say, I don't have change. You know, I say the same thing about $2 bills. Don't bring $2 bills. And I know people are going to argue with me about that. But you bring $2 bills, I can almost guarantee you, you try to give a taxi driver a $2 bill, a $2 bill, and he's going to tell you he didn't have change. And then you're going to pay 2 bucks for a $1.25 fare. That happens. I'm not saying you're going. I'm not saying that it's going to, but it it happened to me. So I couldn't wait to get rid of the two dollar bills that I had. Best thing to do is come here. I came with a thousand dollars. I came with. I think I came with a hundred dollars and one dollar bills, and then the rest was twenties and fives and tens. You know, you need ones. You need fives, and when you get here. You're going to find, you're going to discover the dollar coin. I've shown it to y'all before. The dollar coin, the dollar paper dollar you won't hardly use anywhere. You get these dollar coins everywhere. So I hope that answers your question. I, I wrote in my answer to you, you know, bring a hundred, bring a thousand dollars with you in twenties, tens, fives, and ones. And again, don't bring two dollar bills. Uh, third question, I think I'm going to start in Cuenca, but I'm not sure. Do you have any suggestions? Sounds like it's cooler in Cuenca. Folks, have a plan. Have a plan on where you want to land when you come here. It's not like just going from state to state in the United States. So here, there's, there's two places to go in Ecuador. You either go to the coast or you go to the mountains. There are some places in between that are at all different levels of elevation above sea level. There's different places that have a completely different climate, they have these microclimates everywhere. You can go 15 minutes outside of Monta here on the coast and be in the rainforest and it'd be raining there and the sun is shining here like it is right now. Have a plan on where you want to go. Cuenca is 8,300 feet high. Quito is even higher. It's cooler. You know, you need different clothing to be there. You need, if you go to the coast, it's a lot warmer, a lot more humid. Plus, it's a completely different world between the Andes and the coast. You'll find that when you come here. But, Rodney, try to have some kind of a plan on where you think you want to go. You know, you, I tell people, if you want to explore the coast, the coastal region of Ecuador, come to Monta, get an Airbnb or a short-term rental, and then you can 
go all up and down the coastline. Then you can go to Cuenca and explore the Andes, and they, the two completely different worlds there. Two completely different worlds. I like to tell people that the Andes, especially in Cuenca, it's like heaven on earth. Cuenca is green, lots of water, lots of fresh water, rivers flowing through the city, lots of trees and green grass everywhere and parks, and much is the concrete jungle. But, you know, has the beach. So, have a good plan on where you want to go. One thing about it, I mean, Ecuador is a small country. You can go from Monte to Cuenca in eight hours, vice versa. Number four is, is there anything special I should bring with me? You know, I need to bring, I need to make a new video with a checklist on what to bring. Especially for those of you that, those of you that are coming short term, what to bring. But just kind of summarize things. You, you, Rodney says, I'm not sure where I will end up. There again, I mean, plan, 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 Rodney. That's the great thing about retirement. I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some great things about retirement, but not knowing where you want to go, that could be a bad or good or bad thing, really. I mean, I know I met a gentleman here. I, I don't, I don't think I should mention his name or his ID, but he's. I met him a couple of times. Very interesting guy in his upper seventies. Carries a camera bag on his backpack and a suitcase and he goes travels by bus all over ecuador doesn't have a car and he never knows where he's going to he stays in hostels but he stays in the the nicer hostels he gets the ones with private rooms and the guy's having time of his life i really i kind of envy him because I, I mean i guess i could do that but i have too much stuff i i, I couldn't carry all my stuff around I wrote, you know, in my answer to you, I said, please have some kind of plan. If you will be in Cuenca or Quito, you need completely different clothing than you would have on the coast. When I was in Cuenca last year, I had, I never wore shorts. I had jeans on every day, long sleeve shirts. I had a little fleece that I wore, and I had a light jacket for those times I thought it was cold. People say it's cold. Here's an example of the weather in Cuenca right here. Well, up here, I'll put it right here. You can see it's 60s and 70s in the daytime and 40s and 50s at night. I think sometimes it might get colder there. To me, that's not cold. It's just cooler, you know. But, you know, you get down on the coast, down like down here in Monta, and you'll wear shorts and flip-flops and T-shirts all the time. Look just like a gringo. Number five, Don, I'm not good with computers or technology. Is there anything, anyone there that could help me with all that kind of stuff? There's people around that, there's expats around that are good, you know, retired IT people like me. I'm a retired IT person, been involved in technology most of my adult life. And I know a lot about computers and desktops, laptops, all the different operating systems. Same thing with phones. I'm not real good with Android phones. I just have to hunt and peck, but iOS, Windows, Linux, whatever you have, I can help you with it. You, if you have a Chromebook, you know, I can help you with that. And, but, you know, there are people that will help you for nothing. Like me, I don't charge for helping people with stuff like that. You know, maybe, maybe I would ask you to buy me breakfast. That's cheap enough. It's five bucks. By the way, folks, you go to Dulce and Camoso, you can get a breakfast there. You can get a, eggs, bacon, probably the best bacon in Monte, too, in my opinion. And a big giant croissant, orange juice, and coffee for five bucks that's it I always leave a dollar tip for my favorite waiters but you know six dollars and it's a it's a hearty breakfast actually it cost me 550 because I had an extra egg I always have it with three eggs instead of two I can't there's not enough eggs in the world from far as I'm concerned I'd love to eat eggs 
All right, so your last question is here. Any kind of stuff. Okay, so yeah, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of help, uh, Rodney. I, I hope you, I know people, other people here that maybe would. I don't know, but you know, you, it doesn't hurt to ask. I tell everybody when you get here, get on Mark Bradbury's Facebook page. I'll put a link to it in the description, like I always do. And you can always just get on and say, I need help with my computer. I need help with my Wi Fi or setting up my network or whatever. There's, there's people around, all right? You, you'll, get, you'll get all the help you need. Then his last question, okay, Don, big question. I know you've been there long enough. I've been here 18 months, for those that want to know, to settle in good. Is it still an adventure? Do you still look forward to it all? I don't consider this an adventure. In a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, I'm going to have a car. Then the adventure will really begin because I'm going to get the hell out of this apartment. And out of this city, I'm going to get all around this city, and then I'm going to get out of it, and I'm going to start exploring, and I'm going to start doing some real video work and showing what it's really like here visually, so everybody can see visually what it's like here. But, you know, you, when you come here, it's everybody gets on that, I call it that pink cloud. So you're in that honeymoon. You get you're really excited about being here. New new place, new adventure, new experiences, different new culture. You, you and I'm telling you, within a year, I think I think within a year you're gonna know whether you really wanna be here or not. And whether you wanna stay or not. It it's it is an adventure. I have to say it, it is an adventure when you get here. But it will wear down, and you, when you start uh, learning what the culture is like and how different it is from the United States, it, it is very different. Uh, the people have heard me talk about it. I've been thinking about doing a video about the brutal truth about living in Ecuador, but I had to think of a delicate way to do it because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or ruin my reputation, but... You know, because there's good and bad everywhere you go. You know, that's a, maybe that's what I should ask everybody. Do you think I should do a Brutal Truth video about the good and the bad down here? We always talk about all the good stuff, but we don't really talk a lot about the bad stuff. There is some stuff here that most of you won't like. But you can say that for everywhere. But... Uh, if you want to know the details, I can give them to you. Let me know in the comment section if you if you want to see that video. And I'll have to think about it. i got to be really careful about, about giving out that information. So, anyway, that's your answer, Rodney. I sent you an email with a kind of a brief answer. Um, if, you, if anybody has any questions, I always say the same thing. Just send me an email. There's my email at the bottom of the screen there. And just ask what you want, all right? Please, folks, don't send it on Messenger. Send me an email, and I'll respond to you. I read every email I get, and I respond, and I read to, well, I read every comment I get. There are some comments that I re remove, um, and some that people end up getting blocked, because that's just the way it goes. But... I read all your comments, and a lot of them I will respond to. I believe that most people will agree. So that's it for today from Monte Ecuador. Thanks for watching. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can do the thumbs down thing if you want. And I'll leave it at that. Okay? I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. You know why I'm standing here?
you do that all C's in high school?